Sound like a very good day. So in this video, um, we're going to discuss topic 1.2. So I'm going to cover two objectives. Um, so 1.2 is known as statistical problem solving methodology. Uh, the first objective will be the six basic steps. So what are the basic steps that you have to perform in order to uh, do the solve the problem statistically? And second, I'm going to cover on how do you identify various sampling methods. So if you want to take sample, how is it done? Okay, so basically these are going to be uh, the six steps that uh, you're going to discuss throughout um, 1.2. First, what you're going to do is when you want to start the solving the problem, you're going to identify what is the problem. What are you actually trying to study? What is the objective at the end of study? And who are you studying? So this is going to be the first step. Okay, so first you're going to define ob of objective. So what are you trying to achieve? And then you're going to sort of like look at like the population and sample. Like who are you studying? We know that when it says population. So it is actually who are you studying? So if I wanted to know like what is the mean CGPA of UMP students? CGPA of UMP students. Who am I studying? So obviously I am studying the UMP students. Those are going to be my population of interest. And like if you are taking samples and we know what is sample, if I have this, this is my whole population. If I take a portion, like a little bit of them, I don't take the whole population, but I take a little bit of the population. It could be like, for example, if I have a population of 50 people, my sample could be uh, 10 people. So it could be 20 so it could be 22, 23, and so on. Like, how large should it be? All right. And then uh, we need to know whether it's going to be, uh, how it's going to be done, whether I'm going to impose treatment on uh, my sample or whether it's going to be experimental or whether I just have to take measurements or observation. Okay, so that is the first step. And second step, after you have identified all those things, you have to decide how do you collect the data? So it could be this tree which right here that I'm going to explain later as we go. And then, um, like, if you want to take sample, uh, there are all sort of sampling technique that we're going to have a look at. And this is going to be step number three, right? And then step number four is after you have obtained your data, how do you represent that? Are you going to make a table of it, a chart, a bar chart, a graph, or whatever that you want? So that will be step number four. And then you present and analyze the data. So analyze data is going to be a little bit more complicated. That will be tests. You might use software for it. That will be step number five. And of course, after you are done with all that, you're going to make a decision or conclusion of the objective that you wanted earlier. Okay, so that will be all the six steps. Okay, first we're going to, uh, so this are going to be the first step, which is to identify the problem or opportunity. So this is pretty much similar to what I've explained before. So before we start our study, start asking yourself these questions. What are the problem? What are we trying to study? So what are the variables? So variables is what, what are we trying to study? For example, if I were to refer to what I wanted just now, so the mean CGPA of the UMP student, my variable would be the CGPA. What am I studying? CGPA, who, the UMP students, those will be the population, okay? So basically, variables are what are you studying, right? So can the study be achieved through simple count of measurement? How are you going to do it? Whether you're going to measure something or you just need to count something, right? And is it going to be experimental or is it just observational and so on, okay? And whether you have enough uh, to cover for all your population or do you need to take a sample and so on? So this is what you should think at the beginning of the study. Okay, let's talk about sample. So we know that, as I mentioned just now, so who are we study are referring to the population. So let say this is my whole population. Let's say I have a hundred of people. So that is going to be my population. So if I decide that hundred people is like too much for me to go and like approach and ask for data, so I could have uh, picked a portion of the people instead. For example, instead of uh, for example, if my population of is all your MP students, instead of like approaching all your MP students, I can pick, for example, just my student. Okay, so my sample would be my students. So a portion of the population is called as being the sample. Right. So a uh, sample is called a subset of population. So this is the meaning behind a sample. 
So the population is a complete group. So all, everyone that you wanted to study. Okay. So if I will refer to my um, example just now, I wanted to know what is going to the mean CGPA of UMP students. So who are going to be everyone? So everyone is going to be all the UMP students. So that will be the population. But the thing is that why do we need sample? Because sometimes it is population are just like too good to be true. For example, if I wanted my population to be all Malaysians, then the people who live in the jungle, those are Malaysians as well, as long as they live in Malaysia. And for me to go in the jungle, to approach them and ask questions, so that would be costly and that would be a hassle. So therefore, instead of like having to approach all Malaysians, so I decided to pick a sample that is easier to approach okay so that is the difference between sample and population okay a census is going to be a whole population so for example uh, we have department of statistic malaysia they always do census when we say census it involves the whole population when it says that malaysian is going to involve every single malaysian exist okay so that is a census okay sampling error so what is a sampling error sampling error existed when uh, we use value from sample instead of population. For example, so let's say if I count the CGPA from 100 students, so which is my population, I get a value of, let's say, 3.20. But when I find the uh, mean CGPA from a sample of, let's say, if I take a sample of 20 students, so I get a value of, let's say, 2.85. So the difference between these two values, so that is being called, so the difference between these two values, so that is being called as the sampling error. So that is a sampling error. Okay, so that sampling error, uh, that is also non-sampling error. So everything that is not related to the value that we got from sample, that is going to be non-sampling error. So an unsampling error could be that we have, instead of like, so what, what do you call that? We misidentify the group that we wanted to study. For example, if I wanted to know, so what is going to be a most popular brand? Let's say a phone brand among teenagers. So we are very clear here that my sample should be teenagers. But if I were to go and approach somebody whose age is like 30 plus or somebody who's like um, 40 years old, so they are no longer considered as being teenagers. So this would be a misconception of like who should be sampling. So when we have error like this, so it is considered as being non-sampling error. Okay, so for example, we approach the wrong person. Okay, and what is the characteristic of sample size? So it is very easy, characteristic of sample size. The larger the sample size is, the better. Okay, so remember, you always want your sample size to be large because uh, the larger the sample size, um, the more closer the value is towards the, um, what do you call it, towards the value of the population itself. For example, if I have a population, the value that I get from 10 people, so that is not very accurate, okay? But a value that I get from 60 people, so that would have been better because it like closer towards the value of 100. So the main uh, point is that the larger the sample size is, the better. And depending on the method that you use, that is going to give, be an indicator of how many people should be of your sample. Okay, so, so when a study is um, using a survey method, so what is survey method? Survey method means like you go and approach people and they actually, um, so it's actually depend on them whether or not they're going to be willing to participate in your study or not. So that is called a survey method. Okay, so for, and I, for example, I approach a person, I go to a mall and I approach a random person. So it's, it's based on the person whether the person decides whether or not he is going to answer my question. For example, I could just say no for that. So it's going to be voluntary based. Okay. So when you uh, have using survey method, which is voluntary based, if you wanted to get a hundred response, so you should aim to meet 
more people instead of like you expected that you approach 100 people to get 100 respond you should aim for larger people for example i should go for like i should go for a crowd of 300 people and expect that from that only i can get 100 response because it's voluntary based okay people might say no to you especially when it comes to mail response but i don't think these days we have mail response anyway so mostly we use email to do survey if you notice if you watch youtube and sometimes like before waiting for the video to play there's some random question that is going to come out like do you use pantene or would you like rather use sunset um other than pantene you know they're trying to sort of like making a survey of their product okay so mail response is like I don't know this happened when I was like younger so Nestle used to do it what happened is that they posted letters to your house and they're gonna ask you things like what product do you use do you use Milo at your house or do you use like Nespray you know things like that they want to know like which brand which product of their brand is the most popular that people use okay but the drawback is that when people mail it to you how do they get a response so they only get the response if the the people actually mail it back to them like I received the letter I answer it and I have to post it back like come on like who would post it back so that as well if you use mail response you have to use a much larger sample size if you wanted a hundred response that you should possibly should mail like a thousand letters because people like not many people are willing to do such a thing for you okay so main point is that the larger the sample size, the better it is. Right, so after you have decided on what is your objective, so what are your samples, are you going to take the whole population or is it going to be a sample or portion of that? So you're going to decide on how to collect the data. So there are three ways to obtain data. First is data that are made available by others, okay? For example, if I know what is the recent uh, number of COVID cases, so what I can do is I can go to the website of uh, KKM, Community and Kassetan Malaysia, the Health Administration website, and I can go and have a look so how many COVID cases are there. So that is called as a data that is made available by others. It's already there. You can just extract that. Or if I know, want to know like what is like the average rainfall in a particular place in Malaysia what is the average rainfall in Kuantan so I have to go to like the meteorology department of Malaysia and I have to pick Kuantan specifically and have a look at like what is the mean rainfall so during for example year 2020 until you know, 2000 until 2020 and so on okay so the data is already there you just have to extract it and use it so that is going to be like the most easiest way to find the data Okay, so um, another way, the second way of getting data is data resulted from an experiment, meaning that you have to conduct the experiment. So what is the features of being an experimental study? So the features is that there should be a treatment existed. Okay, so meaning that you don't just observe things, you apply treatment on that, for example. So if I wanted to know, like, uh, if I wanted to come up with a new medicine, like I want to know, like I want it to beat Panadol. So I'm going to come up with something else. Okay, uh, so I have two groups. So the first group is I'm going to give them my new meds. Okay, instead of Panadol, let's say I'm going to call it something else. So let's say um, Medicine X. Okay, and this one I'm going to give them placebo. What is a placebo? It's a very common term in statistics. Placebo means you give them a tablet, like Panadol. But it actually, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't even that effect. It's just like a dummy. Like you give them, it's like sweets actually. But people don't know. They think it's a real medicine. So that is called a placebo. So they trick you. Okay. And see if it works or not. All right. So I actually decided that first group is going to receive X medicine. The second group is going to be given placebo. So that is called as treatment. So these two are treatment. I decide. So which, who get. Uh, the rich treatment so that is called as being experimental study okay and the last one is called observational study observational study so what I call it the reverse to the experimental we don't impose anything but we just observe things or we just count things for example so if I have a class of students and I wanted to know how many people 
is actually wearing spectacles in the class, wearing glasses. All I have to do is count, like one, two, three, four, five. So I didn't do anything. I just count. Or I want to know what is going to be the average height of my student. I measure. I bring a tape and I measure each of the height. So that is called as being observational study. Okay, I don't impose treatment. I just observe whatever that is. Okay, so this is observational study. So it could be in terms of qualitative research. It could be in terms of quali quantitative research. You know what is qualitative and qualitative. So qualitative means it doesn't involve number, it involves categories. For example, I wanted to know the most popular brand of phone. So it could be iPhone. It could be Samsung. So it could be Huawei and so on. Oppo, right? So that is qualitative research. It involves category. Quantitative, it involves numbers. Quantitative, quantity. Okay, so what happened is that, for example, if I wanted to know um, what is quantitative in terms of students, how many phones? I don't think like most people have only one phone. But yeah, there could be people who has more than one phone. For example, quantitative res uh, research is how many phone do people have on average? How many phone? Okay, so that is quantitative. I have to count. Like this person, how many phone do you have? Two. This person have three, this person like, but I think that most average, on average, most people have only one phone, unless you have a business or something. Okay, so that is observation method. You just observe, you go and observe. So interview method, interview method is that you have to go and ask people like what they think about it. For example, um... What should I do for interview matter? What should I, what do I want to know? All right, so uh, I'm going to sort of like collaborate with um, a brand, a clothing brand. And I wanted to know like on average, what uh, brand do students actually wear they, when they come to class? I don't know, like, do you actually wear Zara or do you actually wear H&M? Or do you actually wear something from the brand outlet? So I wanted to know all of those. So, and I, I couldn't observe those things. I couldn't just like have a look at your clothes and decide what brand is that. But I have to go to you and ask you by interviewing. So that is called as the interviewing method. And like, however, interview method is actually not very, what do you call that? Not very exact because it could be biased and misleading. For example, if like a student decides to look rich, like he or she could say that, oh, you know what? I don't wear like brands typical brands I wear sort of like Armani to class or I wear like guess you know something like that so that he or she looks rich okay or he actually like wears something that is like 10 ringgit but you say oh you know what this is from Zara so it could be something like that so interviews method are kind of misleading because I have to trust whatever that person said and like and the person could actually be lying to your face All right so that is interview method so there are all sort of methods of collection, questionnaires and surveys. Like I told you, you open YouTube and they ask you about things. So do you want to do this? Do you like this? Do you like swimming? Do you like snorkeling and so on? So that is a questionnaire or survey. Um, yeah, you can read all those things. There are all sort of like ways on how to collect data. Okay, I'm gonna skip that one, this one for now. I'll probably I'm going to discuss two with you for you, uh, and then you can discuss the rest with the lecturers. Okay, for A, subjects were randomly assigned to two groups, and one group was given a hub. Okay, so one group was given a hub, and the other group is given a placebo. So now here, what happened is that we have two groups. I decide this group receive uh, receive hubs, the other group receive placebo. So this is definitely going to be experimental. Mm -hmm. And B, so a researcher stood by a busy intersection to see if the color of automobile uh, is related to running red lights or not. Okay, so he doesn't, basically he doesn't do anything. He just sit there and observe uh, the color of an automobile, a car or a bike or whatever that is. So this is going to be observational. Okay, so basically if you decide on the treatment, it's experimental. If you just sit and observe and look at, okay. So that is called as being observational study.